What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV back here for another episode of the Premier League Perspective, where we take a look at the Premier League games, review it, put a bit of a Spurs spin on it, which is probably not too relevant anymore. But we do have our scores on the doors from the Premier League predicts as well, which is five points for a correct scoreline, one point for a correct result. The scores at the moment are 112 to 105 in my favour. Let's get straight into it with the first game that we're going to review. So actually, it's like a lag this week. So we've got the midweek games of last week and the weekend games that have just gone. And the first one we're going to look at is Manchester United against Leicester, which finished 2-1 to Leicester. Five points to me as I went 2-1 to Leicester. Zero points for Simeon as you went nil nil. Did you see much of this game? Yeah, and uh, Leicester fully deserved it, to be fair. You know, I did play a completely uh, second string team. He might be third string, mm. but um, a lot of youngsters were playing and they uh, gave it a good go. But I think Leicester kind of always looked like they were always good for a, for a victory in this one. And, and you know, uh, playing their first team against this Man United um, B team, they fully deserved it. And that pretty much that went a long way to sealing a top four spot for them. Mm. All right. So the scores after that game is 105 to 117 to me, falling all the way behind Sim. Keep falling. Uh, the next game is Southampton against Crystal Palace, which finished 3 1 to Southampton. I went 1 1, so I don't get any points there. Simeon went 2 1 to Southampton, letting you down in the 90th minute again. But you get a point at least. You get a point. First time. It is what it is. Look. I th I thought Southampton would win this game, and uh, they did, and uh, I didn't see any of it, but uh, good win for Southampton. Yeah, so the scores right now, 106 to you, 117 to me, as we move on to Chelsea-Arsenal in the London derby, which finished 1-0 to Arsenal. I went 2-0 to Chelsea, you went 2-1 to Chelsea, uh, but Jorginho letting us down on the day. Yeah, unbelievable. Um, near own goal, trying to score an own goal um, uh, in from 25 yards, nearly putting it in his own area. Only a great save from Kepa stopping it, and uh, obviously that led to the first goal. Havertz, though, will be very disappointed. He didn't get on the score sheet in this game, especially for that chance right near the beginning of the game at 0-0, where he's one-on-one -on -one with Leno and he just blazes over the yeah. bar. Yeah. Um, I think Arsenal were okay. I, don't, I, wouldn't say, <clears throat> I wouldn't say it was a great performance from Arsenal. I would say Chelsea probably had one arm the cup final, uh, which you know didn't kind of pan out for them. But it was a really bad game of football. It wasn't a great game of football, and Arsenal got the goal, which was pretty much given to them, and that was like that was it after that, really. Yeah, completely. Uh, let's move on to Aston Villa against Everton. It finished nil nil. I went one nil to Everton. You went one nil to Everton. So absolute, well, nearly right. Just one goal in it, but yeah. uh, zero points for both of us there. Um, what did you yeah, make I out of the game? You one. didn't see much of it. Me neither. Nah. I'm struggling to watch all this football at the moment. There's, I mean, two, there's a lot. Especially when we with first Spurs, when we first started doing this, we were both watching like every game yeah, and so but excited. Then Spurs, yeah, then Spurs <laughs> and then Spurs happened. And then, look, um, bad result for Everton, who really needed the points to cling on to any chance of uh, European football for next season. And now we'll see later but uh, you know it's really fallen off a cliff for them yeah Manchester United against Liverpool at Old Trafford it finished 4-2 to Liverpool I went 3-2 to Man United you went 2-1 to Liverpool so you get a point there uh, predicting the Liverpool win uh, what did you make out of this one yeah another great game of football and um I thought that this one was re like toing and froing all like all the time. And uh, Man United took the lead. Liverpool went they went three one up. Man United pulled it back to three two and could have been three three if it wasn't for a shot cleared off the line from Greenwood. And then Salah sealing it right at the end four two, and that was a major, major, major boost for mm. Liverpool in their hopes for getting top four. They needed to get all three points of this game, and you know, unlike Spurs, who when they got an opportunity, like they say bottle it. Liverpool turned up, yeah. and fair play to them. Man United clearly rested all their players in light of this game, and they clearly had all eyes on this game, and um, it didn't quite work out for them. They 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 faltered in the end uh, in this one, but Liverpool, I think, having uh, I think the game being called off. Um, a couple of weeks ago, whenever it was a week ago, that had a bad effect for Man United for these two games, losing bo both of them, because I think <laughs> they probably could have got something in both of them if they didn't. And, and the fans tried to do it again in this game. You saw the, the images of the cars blocking off the road with the Liverpool team bus, which had no Liverpool players on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, I think Liverpool snatched that chance with both, uh, both hands. 
and a great win for them. And now it gives them a real fighting chance of getting that, of snatching that full spot. Uh, yeah, definitely. As we move on to the last game of the midweek games from last week, and that is Newcastle against Manchester City on the Friday night, which finished 4-3 to Man City in an absolutely amazing game. Uh, I went 2-1 to Man City. You went 2-0 to Man City. Uh, so we fun. both got a point there. But um, we were wide off the mark with the yeah, actual scoreline. Yeah, what a game. Newcastle, well, the shackles were off, weren't they? Newcastle went all out. City kind of rested a few players. But even, you know, with Man City, even they rest a few players, um, they still got so much quality. And, and also, kind of in this kind of game, it might even benefit them because these players with loads so much quality are so desperate to impress with the Champions League final coming up. They're all going to try their all to try and win a place uh, um, in, in that final. So, and that was Ferran, on show with Ferran Torres, wasn't it? So Ferran Torres gave that hat-trick, great hat-trick as well. Um, fair play to him. Uh, Newcastle gave it their best shot, but the quality of City shone through in the end and it mm. was a great game. All right, so at the end of last week's midweek games, the scores, there's 10-point gap there with 118 to me, 108 to Simeon as we move on to the weekend games. The first game on the Saturday morning was Burnley against Leeds. Leeds winning 4-0. I went 2-1 to Leeds. You went 2-2, so you fought up even further behind. Another point there, 119, 108. Um, I didn't see any of this game, did you? No. Because we were here in the studio, weren't yeah, exactly, we? exactly, preparing, I think. so. Um, but uh, credit to Leeds, 4-0 win away from home against... No, uh, we were at the protest. Oh, we were at the protest, That's right. 4-0 uh, win to, to Leeds away from home. And Rodrigo with a couple of great goals as well yeah. right at the end. Yeah, no, most definitely. And, you know, a Burnley side who have um, been hit, been on song the last couple of weeks. Yeah, been in really good form. I'm surprised that Leeds wiped the floor with them. But it shows when Leeds turn up that they could really, uh, they're so strong. And uh, they've ended the season really strongly, to be yeah. fair to them. So fair play to Leeds and a great win for them. As we move on to Southampton against Fulham. 3-1 to Southampton on the day. I went 2-0 to Southampton. You went 2-1 to Southampton. Another late goal. You miss out on another five points. twice. In. <laughs> Screw me over the Unbelievable, goal. unbelievable. But we both do get a point there, uh, which makes the scores 109-120. Yep, I didn't see this one. Yeah, uh, again, we were at the protest. Um, so we move on to Brighton against West Ham, which finished 1-1. I went 2-2, you went 2-2. So we both get a point there, which makes it 110 to 121. Um, but West Ham saving themselves. Well, I would, you'd, I would argue faltering kind well, of. Well, saving themselves from a loss. Yeah, uh, with a late goal from Ben Rama. Great finish from Ben Rama, his first goal for West Ham. And I think it's been coming because his improved performances have improved a lot of late Ben Rama. Mm. And he's starting to pick up a lot, quite a lot. But unfortunately, it wasn't enough West Ham. Or well, fortunately for Spurs, it was. Um, but Brighton, again, showing that they can play some really good football against the league's uh, better sides as well. And they, they again, they had a really good performance, Brighton, and deserved to take the lead. But fair play to West Ham. Didn't give up. Got back in the game, but was enough for the win. And now they've, they're European football. Uh, well, not European football, but Europa League football is out of their hands now at this mm. stage. And we're, we're seeing the position they were the past couple months. They'll be kicking themselves. Yeah, five games ago, they were in the top four, weren't they? Yeah, and people were saying that, you know, one of the favourites were top yeah. four at that point well, you with know, the fixture list they had. They, they've kind of run out of steam. They've like, out of their last yeah. four games, they've like lost two, drawn one and one one. So We thought well, after beating Burnley, when was it, last week or a couple of weeks ago, they thought maybe they were going to get back on track. But uh, they drew drew, and they lost and they lost to Everton last week as well. Two mm. really insipid performances. Yeah. So West Ham faltering right at the end. But they'll fight two for nil to finish above us. I think that's their main aim at this point. Uh, Palace against Villa was the next game. Finished 3-2 to Palace on the day, which was the early kickoff on the Sunday. I went 1-0 to Villa. You went 1-1. So both of us getting that wrong. Um, I didn't see this because I was in the studio preparing for the game. Did you see any of this one? We were both in the studio. We were, uh, we were both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Benteke, uh, I know Benteke scored uh, uh, carrying on his good run. And um, he's one great goal, where, Benteke. Yeah, and he's one where he seems to got a spring in his step back, and um, you know he's on a free in a summer, and I, it's got me thinking: should we consider someone like Benteke? But uh, good win, uh, Palace um, not letting the end of the season go by, and um, good win for them. And Villa will be de definitely uh, not happy with how that game ended for mm. sure. Definitely, as we move on to Tottenham against Wolves, finished two 0 to Spurs on the day. 
I went 2-1, and you went 1-1, Sim. You went 1-1, so I gained another point on you there. 122, 110 other scores, uh, but Spurs completely wiping the floor with Wolves, in my opinion. Yeah, and it was very dominant display. A lot of, um, it was a lot. I questioned whether Spurs would have the fight in this game to to get the win, but they more than did that, and they completely battered Wolves, and Wolves got away with 2-0, to be honest, because mm. it should have been far worse, and it was a great performance. Yeah. As we move on to West Brom against Liverpool in the penultimate game of the weekend, which finished 2-1 to Liverpool. I went 3-1 to Liverpool. You went 2-0 to Liverpool. So both of us getting a point there. But look, it's all about Alisson, isn't it? Come up for the corner. And what a header to win the game for them. What yeah, a header. And they needed him. Literally, that goal was so crucial because they couldn't afford to drop points again in both those games. And to be fair, I, I think... Uh, West Brom got a bit robbed with that offside goal. I really do because I think uh, when when the defender hits it, um, in the the guy isn't obstructing Allison at all. That he can clearly see the defender put it away. So I think that is a real um, a harsh call on uh, the West Brom, and it should have been two one to them at that point. But the, I thought they played really well, West Brom. They mm. were so unlucky not to get anything out of this game. They had a f- loads of chance on the breakaway as well before Liverpool. Um, put scored the win in the 90th minute, 95th minute. Even it was literally the last kick of the game. Yeah. It was literally the last yeah, kick was. of the game. And um, fair play, they keep plugging away. It looks like at least they're going to have top five now sewn up, and it's whether they they can um, get get the win get the wins they need to get top four now. Mm. And the last game of the weekend, Everton against Sheffield United, which finished one 0 to Sheffield United at Goodison Park. Heaps more misery on Everton's home form. Um, I went 1-0 Everton, you went 3-0 to Everton, so both of us wide off the mark there, but you've got to give credit to Sheffield United yeah. for turning up on the day. Credit to Sheffield United, but Everton, man, completely falling off a cliff in their fight for European football. Ancelotti will be so disappointed, They've I think. They've been doing this at home all season. I know, but Ancelotti, every, all, all, I, I watch a lot of his um, uh, post-match interviews, and he's always t- talking about how he's confident that they're going to still be getting top four, and he's... He, he thinks that like top four or, or European football is very much on for them, but unfortunately, it's just fallen completely flat for them. And uh, losing one 0 at home to Sheffield United is a result which uh, should be unacceptable at this point, knowing how good Everton can be, and an already relegated Sheffield United, one that rolled over for us when we battered them four 0 not so long ago. That was an easy game for us. So yeah. Everton not even scoring at all in a, such a crucial game must be really, really um, depressing for Ancelotti and for a lot of Everton fans. So I think at this point, with their last two games, they've got City and I don't know who else, but they got two hard games. So mm. I think European football is done for them for the season, unfortunately. Mm. Yeah, it might be the case. But look, that is the end of the Premier League's perspective. The Premier League prediction show for this midweek's round of fixtures will be coming to you tomorrow. Um, the scores at the end of this round are 123 to myself, 111 to Simi, 12 points. You uh, you still confident you're going to pull this one back? Because the, ba- the gap's getting bigger and bigger. Three games. Wipes it out. Three games does wipe it out. That's it. But, you know, it's they're getting bigger and bigger every week. And, you well, know, last week was two games. I've cut it back before and I've cut it back again. <laughs> you see the confidence in this boy is unrivaled. But there you have it. That is the Premier League's perspective. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any thoughts regarding any of the games we spoke about today. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on, on you Spurs. Spurs.